I've been trying out Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 via the Xbox Game Pass option on PC. It still offers a $1 trial period, so those who haven't already tried it out on PC should be eligible for the $1 deal. I understood that the game requires a powerful PC to run at decent frame rates, so the ability to test it via Game Pass has been useful for me. My PC is mid-range, so I didn't expect amazing performance, but it hasn't been too bad so far. And with the release of the game on Xbox, on the Series S and Series X versions only, the developers have been working on some optimizations, which Digital Foundry covered in a recent video on their channel. And a nearly nine gigabyte uh, reduction in system memory in the exact same scene. These are huge numbers. Uh, how was this achieved? A tagline in the game is explore the world, which is true to an extent. A relative of mine here in Finland lives near a small local airstrip, which actually appears in the game. And when flying over where they live, while not completely accurate, it's still amazing to see the place where they live appearing in the game, since it's rendered dynamically in the 3D environment. The city of New York includes some bridges which are correctly rendered and if you're brave enough, you can even fly below them. Some other bridges appear solid underneath, which isn't correct. A limitation of the photogrammetry process, rendering the terrain from satellite imagery provided by Bing Maps. And while they've also added some road traffic to make the world seem a bit more alive, the results can sometimes be a bit odd looking. And it's often just funny to watch the vehicles attempting to navigate the roads rendered in the 3D world. And in Naples, Italy, I noticed there are some expensive looking boats sitting in, not on the water. And finally, I was curious to see if any famous archaeological sites might be rendered at all, other than the more obvious locations such as the Pyramids of Giza in Egypt, which is a featured location. You can visit, for example, Rapa Nui or Easter Island. And the locations of the stone carved figures, known as Moai, appear in Bing Maps, albeit from an overhead satellite image. And when flying by in game, they are reduced to what look like shadows on the ground. And the Inca site of Machu Picchu, high up in the Andes, is rendered rather well, it seems, in Bing Maps. Again, from an overhead satellite image, of course. While in-game, the available point of interest appears to be in the wrong place right now. And the map render is again of lesser quality. And when flying by, it doesn't look so great either. Now, I'm not expecting thousands of man-hours spent creating custom 3D assets to replace what might be missing or appear incorrect in thousands of locations across the globe. They're attempting to include the whole world in the game, and many, many elements depend on the ability of the photogrammetry system to interpret them correctly from the available satellite imagery. 
Perhaps the tagline should be more like, explore the world as long as you stay above 500 feet. Now I'm no expert on flight simulators, so I usually begin with the basics. I have a joystick to use, a rather basic one that I picked up a few years back. It's a basic Mad Cats branded flight stick by SciTech and a discontinued product at this point I think. While trying out Microsoft Flight Simulator with this flight stick, I noticed that the default controller profile was empty as the game didn't seem to recognize it. The default profiles for a keyboard, mouse and an Xbox controller were of course pre-configured. So I would now need to manually create a custom controller profile for this flight stick. I looked at several videos covering the basics of controls and flight and by trial and error was able to create a basic controller profile which I thought I would share. Should anyone like me have an older controller the game perhaps doesn't recognize correctly. With a custom controller profile created, on the left we'll filter by assigned, to display only those controls we've assigned. And you can also use the expand or collapse all options on the left, or expand the individual sections by clicking on them. So let's go through the controller profile I've created for this flight stick. First under flight control surfaces are the primary control surfaces. The left and right axis on the flight stick are assigned to the ailerons on the wings. Forward and back on the flight stick are assigned to the elevator on the tail. And rotating the stick left and right is assigned to the rudder on the tail. Under secondary control surfaces, buttons 3 and 5 are assigned to the flaps. And under power management, the throttle is assigned to the axis at the rear of the flight stick. Under control trimming surfaces, buttons 4 and 5 are assigned to the trim. I'll include a link below to a video by Squirrel, explaining what trim is used for. Let's start with trip. What is trim? Right now, I'm flying along. Landing gear is assigned to button 2 and is used to toggle the gear for those aircraft that include retractable landing gear. Under camera, external camera, I assigned the four-way point of view switch to look up, down, left and right when in external camera view. And the trigger on the front of the joystick I assigned to switch between cockpit and external view and the button below it to reset the external view. And to finish a couple of keyboard inputs. Under instruments and systems, flight instruments, the B key is assigned to set altimeter. The altimeter will be set automatically, based on your altitude when loading into the game. In this example, we're setting the altimeter at a landing strip in the mountains high above sea level. And then in another example, we're taking off lower down at sea level. And under brakes, the P key is assigned to toggle parking brakes. Since in most cases, you'll need to release the parking brakes before you can take off. And the wheel on your mouse can be used to zoom the camera in and out. And finally, an example takeoff using the controls we've just assigned.
If you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe. And if you know anyone who might need help setting up Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, then consider sharing the video with them. And any comments below are always welcome. Until next time, thank you.